Welcome to Seals to the Wild, proudly powered by Red Energy. My name is Tanisha, and I would firstly like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, the Camaragal people. For thousands of years, the Camaragal people shared a very special connection with these parts of Sydney Harbour and its wildlife. And here at Taronga, we like to share that connection through our seals. Now, all of the seals that we will be meeting this afternoon are either rare, rescued, or have been relocated. And these are Taronga's very special ambassadors for the wild. So the first seal that we will be meeting this afternoon is an Australian sea lion by the name of Tani. Tani was found um, washed up on a beach in South Australia. And she was monitored for a little bit just as a pup and it didn't seem like mum was coming back. So she was taken into care at a rescue facility down in South Australia. Oh wow. Well. She was nursed back to good health. And then she was relocated here to Taronga Zoo and is now a great ambassador for the species. So please make a very welcome Tani and keep her proud. So one of the most important things here that we train at Taronga is our cooperative care or husbandry behaviours. So these are one of the first things that we do train our seals and it allows us to engage with the seals and they can cooperate in their own daily health care. So things like asking Tani to pre present her mouth, we can open her mouth, have a look for any things that may be stuck, any signs of injury or illness, any inflamed gums. We can also have a nice look at those eyes and her ears. As you can see, she does have the ears. As she is an eared seal, they do have those nice external ears. We can also go ask her to present her flipper, giving us a nice inspection of that underneath area. One of our other behaviours that we do like to teach our females as well is a lie down and a roll over. So as you can see, right there can get up close and personal with Tani, giving her body a complete inspection as they are, do have those wild instincts to hide any signs of injury or illness. So giving, getting up close and personal with our animals allows us to get a good look and have a thorough once over. We do have very special breeding programs here at Taronga Zoo and getting our animals to be able to lie down and then roll over, we can also train things such as ultrasounds and x-rays. This is great to check for pregnancies and also just general x-ray requirements as well. Have a quick look at her belly as well. A little bit of a rub for Tani. As you can see, she can move around on land very well with those front flippers. Oh, Tani wants to go for a little bit of a walk. Hello. <laughs> nice wave goodbye from Tani. So as you can see, Tani does have that very beautiful coloration of the grey back and cream belly. So when Australian sea lions are born, they're actually born brown, a nice chocolate colour. Then as they age, they slowly go nice silver back, cream belly, it's a form of counter shading. Other marine animals such as penguins do have this um, counter shading as well. It's so, if you're looking at them from underneath any predators, if you look up, they blend in very well with the sky. And much like if you look at them from above and looking down, they blend into the ocean floor. So then as they mature, the females will stay this colour and the males will actually go a nice chocolate brown. So as a young male, you don't want to stand out to any of the older big bulls. You want to stay a little bit low key, stay in camouflage with the ladies. So that's why it takes a little bit longer for them to then transition into the nice chocolate colour. So the next seal that we are going to be meeting is another Australian sea lion by the name of Moby. When he comes out here, you'll be able to see he does look very similar to Tani but is a lot darker. He also does look a bit chunkier, does have a bit of a bigger neck. So as they grow older, as I mentioned, they get the nice chocolate brown colour, they do get thicker on the shoulders and the neck, and they eventually get a nice blonde cap, which is a sign of maturity. So that's where they get the name the sea lion from as well, with that nice blonde wave. Please welcome out Moby and keep an edge. As I mentioned this before and as Tani was showing us, a very important part of caring for our seals involves teaching them behaviours. They won't do anything they don't want to do. Training takes time and trust. So these behaviours can be something more simple, like Tani was showing us before, our husband doing behaviours, like opening your mouth for a quick health check. Or we can also train them things that are more high energy and complex, which involve lots of steps, which is what we're going to be showing you. So Moby is going to be showing us a behaviour known as a high bow. 
where he'll be jumping into the water and touching his nose on that boy in the centre. But he won't make it from there, so we'll give him a little bit of a runner. <laughs> For this one, though, I'm going to need your help. On the count of three, I'm going to ask. Oh, waiting for me. <laughs> On the count of three, I'm going to ask you all, as loud as you can, to yell, jump, Moby. Ready, guys? One, two, three. Jump, Moby. Beautiful work from Moby. A little bit of a splash as well. As you can see, our seals are really great at catching those fish, and it is due to those very sensitive whiskers. So on the end of the whiskers, they do have little nerve fibers, which allow them to detect fish in dark and murky waters. Big thank you to Keeper Ed and Murphy. So as I was mentioning, those whiskers do help them to detect fish in dark and murky waters. Moby Ken at the moment is eating about eight kilos of fish a day, which is one big metal bucket full to the top. Luckily, he does have keeper ants to help him with his diet, but unfortunately, the same can't be fed. Same can't be said for our seals out there in our oceans. So sadly, we are overfishing our oceans, making it harder for Moby's wild cousins out there to find their next meal. But there is something we can all do. Next time you're out shopping for seafood, look for the MSC tick. So this logo on the right here, and also on the wall behind me, stands for the Marine Stewardship Council, which is a non-for-profit organization. So when you're out shopping for seafood, if you choose MSC, you're supporting an organization that protects fish stocks, jobs, and the environment. And we can all make a conscious decision towards sustainability. So the next seal we'll be meeting this afternoon is another Australian sea lion. Her name is Nala, another female. She's a little bit smaller than Tani, about 20 kilos lighter. But she does look very similar. You probably won't be able to tell the size difference from out there in the audience. But please make welcome Nala and Kiko Michelle. <laughs> so did you know you all have something very in common with Nala? Have a look at your hand. Now, have a look at Nala's front flipper. The bone structure in our hands and Nala's front flipper are actually the same. So although those slippers may look a little bit awkward for moving around on land, they do allow eve seals like Nala to move around quite easily. So let's have a look as she goes for a bit of a walk. <laughs> and a little slide. Watch as she uses all four of her flippers to make it all the way to the top of that wharf. As you can see, those slippers are great on land. However, it is in the water where we see their true ability. <laughs> A little bit distracted up there. <laughs> there we go. Have a look how she works. Those slippers in the water. <laughs> So this behaviour that Nala is showing us here is a natural behaviour known as bowing or porpoising. If you listen carefully, you can even, even hear Nala take a quick breath of air as she leaps through the water. So this behaviour allows seals to move through the water quickly when catching up to prey or escaping from predators. Now seals are great predators out there in our oceans, but there are other predators out there that are very important for a healthy ecosystem, however, are often misunderstood. So Nala's going to give us a little bit of a hint as to what that predator is. Yell it out if you have any ideas. Shark. Sure. That's right, I've heard of a shark. Probably the prettiest shark you'll ever see. But what Nala is showing us is another natural behaviour known as sailing or thermoregulation. So you might not be able to tell, but Nala does have a very thick fur coat, which is great at keeping the body heat in. But it's only those naked and hairless slippers that will allow the body heat back out again. So what Nala will do is stick one of those slippers out of the water, catch a nice sea breeze, and that will allow her to cool down. Very nice work. They can also do the same thing with their back slippers as well and they can almost look like they're doing water aerobics sticking their back flippers out of the water. <laughs> those front flippers are also incredibly strong and Nala can support her entire body weight on those front two flippers alone. Ooh. She is weighing in at about 60 kilos at the 
moment. So I do think that is quite impressive. Beautiful smile. <laughs> Those slippers are good for one more thing, and that is to wave goodbye. Big wave goodbye to Nala, Kim, and Michelle. Thank you. So the next seal that we will be meeting this afternoon in the final seal is not a local, but is actually native to the west coast of America. His name is Cisco, and he is a Californian sea lion. You might have seen photos before of Californian sea lions along the coast of California, all piled up together on board. So they are one of the most common seal species to find living close to humans. Now Cisco is nine years old and relocated to us from the zoo in Holland when he was only a little pup and he is now weighing in at 260 kilos. So I'm not big enough to two. And I'm just going to give a little warning as well. Those of you in the front few rows, you will get wet. So if you're not too keen on that, I'll give you a few seconds just to run up a little bit higher into the audience. Big hello from Cisco, Peter Ange and Dana down the front as well. Let's make them feel welcome. So California sea lions are very high energy, they love learning new things. So this is a new behaviour we are teaching them. We've got Dana out the front here as well, just to help them connect to point A and point B.